Ты это не слышишь, да? Hello everyone, we will start soon. Hi Vladislav. Hi Kevin. Hi Isabel, thank you for joining me from Portugal, great! Hello from Australia, wow! Hello from Turkey. Hello Korea. Hello Austria. Happy to see you there. Hello Shanghai. California, welcome, it's too early in California. Hello, New York. Hello Brazil. Hi Poland. Hello from India. Okay. Hi. So we have a lot of people. Great. Uh, welcome to my studio. So we ready to start. Welcome to my studio in Montreal. Uh, 
now I have uh, just a 10 a.m. at the morning and welcome to my demo I will try to make it really fast I don't want to take uh, a lot of your time and this is our first experiment uh, with a live streaming on YouTube so if it will be some technical issue please uh, forgive me we just trying to do that and uh, this is our subject for today beautiful lady and if you follow me uh, and saw uh, some of my demos or uh, lessons, you know, normally I'm painting in the few steps. Normally I always put the lights first, after that we create the shadow and in the end uh, create the details. Uh, for today I prepared a surprise for you. I will try to make all of these by one step only. I mean, really just one touching. If I will be lucky in the end, you will see like a really fresh painting in one layer. And uh, during all the process, uh, feel free to ask me any questions, no problem. I couldn't tape it because uh, I'm gonna paint, but I can read it and uh, answer you. So that's your time. Uh, just check the cameras, is everything fine? Okay, so I switch to my table camera and we will start. And thank you for joining me, it's uh, a lot of people there. I'm really happy to see you. Okay. This is the Sanders Water Ford paper, a neutral color, 300 grams. And uh, I'm gonna use for that uh, five colors from the Daniel Smith. Uh, all of them you can find on my personal set, the master set from the Daniel Smith. Three of them I'm using always. Uh, this is a Pyrene Violet, Indigo and the uh, Queen Cardone Sienna. So that my main colors and I'm almost eating them. So we need definitely a lot of Indigo for the all the soft background and the shadows like all that area, the darkness area here, we're gonna use that. For skin and for the all warm light what we have on the picture, mostly I'm gonna use the Queen Sienna. That's the second main color. And just a little bit pure and violet. We have a beautiful reddish reflection here on the leg, on the face. So for this I'm going to use just a pure and violet. One red color will be enough. Hi David from India, welcome to join. And um, two cold colors, except the uh, indigo for sure, uh, we will use cobalt, a little bit for the sun reflection here, for instance, look at that. It's a beautiful cobalt reflection. It's right there and it's very visible. And I'm gonna use this. And for the dress here, uh, I don't want to pick up exactly that color. Uh, I will use something a little bit different. I prefer to use the Phthalo Blue Turquoise. Uh, this is a kind of new pigment from the Daniel Smith. Uh, it was made like around uh, one year ago or something like that. I really like it. It's a transparent, colorful and really, really nice. So we make it a little bit more greenish, just a little bit. And it's it's very concentrated and powerful pigment. Okay. And uh, I will uh, tape in chat all the pigments what I'm used there. Uh, so you can back to that to check, to be sure what, what you know, all the names of the pigments. Okay, so let's go. I just uh, make a few marks for me by pencil 
I don't want to make the detail sketch for that, just something to to measure my space. Because all the uh, the photo, the reference photo is uh, very delicate. I definitely don't want to create the strong lines. So then I'm sketching, uh, it's not, I'm not trying to produce the perfect shape. I'm always trying to measure my paper. Nothing more. So I make it special, almost transparent again, because it's a very delicate subject. I don't want to see the strong lines on my paper. That's why it's just few points for measuring. So uh, it's almost like a ghost, but for, uh, for our job, for fast sketch, that's enough. And we starting from the negative space. I want to explain the light, what we have here. Uh, that's why I will do that first. And before we start, I spray my paper a little bit. That's give me a little bit more time to play with my ingredients. But some parts I want to keep like a dry paper. That's why I will use that paper tower to be sure that there is no water here to keep the, the lines strong. This is another one way how to sketch. Because from, from the side, I see uh, the shiny water on my paper, except the highlights what I'm doing now. All right. Hi David from Belgium. Belgium. Welcome to join. And because I want to create the soft background, I'm starting from real water. This is just the water, nothing more. And we're starting to use the pigments. I will use the negative space to create the silhouette, the shape of the body and the face. And for now I use a little bit cobalt to make it colder. Let's make a great contrast to, to the color of the skin.
my board have an angle around like a five degrees uh, that's why you see I'm using the gravity and the water move in that direction I see it's uh, 150 people joined me today, so thank you for that very much. I'm really happy to see you. And remember, any questions, feel free. That's your time. So for now, I create the silhouette of the this beautiful lady. And that's why I need the negative space first. Hello from Philippines. Yeah, Lyudmila, Russia. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind words. Denmark, welcome. Yeah, this is my subject. Uh, you saw that photo on the poster. It's very nice and very soft, beautiful photo, just amazing. It looks like it's made special for the watercolor. I just couldn't keep the, my reference photo here because uh, that's my painting area, unfortunately. Okay, I can try to put it there. Maybe that helps. Yeah, I see the question about the courses. Yes. Um, Special for that on my website watercolonline.com we create the right start package. Uh, this made special for uh, for my feeling the right start uh, in watercolor. Uh, inside the package you will find the four video lessons for the beginners and uh, the real uh, hardcover book which will be delivered to your hands. And uh, it's good combination, the video lessons and the book. Okay. So for my opinion, that's the, the best start. Okay, and we starting to create the lady.
as I promised it, I'm trying to make it in one layer and trying to keep everything look pretty fresh. And as you know, on my palette, uh, the brown colors not exist. I'm always mixing them. So, and the main mix, it's the Queen Acridon Sienna and Indigo. Okay. Uh, yeah, I see the question from Portugal. The brushes. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, about those brushes, uh, I, I can create a huge speech. These brushes uh, I make, um, so my factory, what we have a um, connection, make that brushes special for me. It's a great quality, uh, gold brushes, special design. And it's not just a simple goat, it's uh, more complicated. And the goat was, uh, the hair was prepared. That's why it's a pretty strong brush and very tiny. You see, it's a, almost flat. That's why it's very easy to use for the washout technique. And we planning to create the, a free lesson on my YouTube channel about the brushes. And uh, on that lesson, we will talk about that brushes too. I will introduce you all the information about these brushes. It's really, really unique product. And honestly, I have no idea how I can paint without that brushes for now. Mm. Yes, Barb, yes, I stretch it my paper. Uh, I use the my solo black tape here you can see it on the perimeter, it's stretched. I like the flat paper, it's for sure it's comfortable for paint and then it's dry, it will be flat again, so that's great. Um, yeah, about my paper, mostly I use the uh, Saunders Water Fort that I'm painting times to times I switch to the uh, Arches paper, but always this is the rough paper, 300 grams. That's my favorite combination. Okay, <laughs> yes, good question. Um, you know, I'm starting to, to paint, uh, to draw. Then I was uh, just uh, five years old and I didn't stop since that time. When I'm starting to do that, I just like that process. And finally, I, I think it's, it's a good job to do what you want to do. And since that time, I'm always painting, sketching and didn't stop. Yes, I see the uh, the question about the colors. Okay, uh, you know, personally, I'm, I'm a lazy guy. I'm trying to use the less pigments as possible in one painting. So normally it's never will be more than six. That helped me to keep the good balance and make all the colors connected. So the six colors is ma maximum. The, the better is five.
So we're softly going down. You see, uh, almost everything what I'm doing here, I do with the, that uh, brush. It's a solo flat brush. It's my own brand, three lines. By the way, you can find all that brushes and all the information about that brushes on my website, watercolonline.com. So now we're going to paint a little bit more faster. Huh. Okay, the question from Natalia. Mm -hmm. um, good question. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, you know, my, my main subject uh, is the light and I'm trying to do my best to keep the, uh, the light uh, always on my painting. Yeah, so, uh, sorry for the Russian. Основная идея, понимаете, просто думать светом, uh, и тогда не возникает желания их растушевать, если просто думать про свет и тень, а не про объекты. Тогда все становится совсем по-другому. Thank you for question. Yeah, about the flat brushes. Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, because it's, look at that. It's extremely sharp. You see? So I can make the very tiny lines and the details and the same moment I can make the big shapes with the same brush. So uh, it's give me a lot of time, uh, save me a lot of time because I don't have to switch from one brush to another one brush. And plus this brush hold uh, enough water for me to, to work with that. So yeah, uh, I prefer to paint this. and. You see the soft gradients, what I'm trying to create with a small brush that will be almost impossible. With that one, that's easy. Uh, okay, about the control water. Hmm. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I have to say that's question of the experience, definitely. But uh, to take that experience, uh, it's not just uh, how many paper you put in the garbage. Not about this. It's about how you think about what you're doing. If you think about a watercolor painting, like about water only, and maybe just a little bit colors inside that water, you will take the right experience. Because that's what we have, honestly. It's just water. And all what I'm doing, I'm trying to play with water. I use a little bit pigments, but it's not painting process, definitely. So it's not like an oil or acrylic. I like all the medium, but watercolor is more game. Да, Наталья, definitely, a light is number one. You know, we see something because of the light. Turn off light, you see zero, and that's what I'm trying to, to do always. Pick up the light. <laughs> Спасибо, Владислав. А, кстати говоря, для всех, кто смотрит меня 
русскоговорящих. У меня есть канал на русском языке «5 минут акварельных секретов». Если вы про него еще не знаете, добро пожаловать. And by the way, you see about the brushes. Uh, I, for now, I create a very small touching and a delicate touching using the same big guy. So it works. Now I switch to the legs and gonna use for this uh, mostly the pure violet. A little bit cobalt inside to make it colder. But you see, I'm using the uh, the same dirt mix what it was before. Okay, uh, about the fresh paint uh, for painting. You know, normally I never doing this. I did it just for the demo because in that case you see the colors what I'm mixing and what I'm using. On my palette, I am always use the dry pigments, always. It's more easy to control because for now I have to be careful uh, then I pick up the pigments because I can take a lot of them because they are fresh. If uh, my palette will be dry like something like this uh, what I'm using so that's more easy Yes, Dian, yes, uh, the back side of my paper was wet before I start. That's why, uh, by the way, uh, that's the answer why I make the soft sketch by pencil, because I couldn't use the pressure. You know, on the wet, wet paper, on the back side wet paper, that's impossible to make the strong sketch. So that was the reason. Okay, why I'm not following the okay original colors? You know, um, I don't want to be a copy machine. I'm always uh, nobody can make the perfect photo for me because uh, I have a different vision, different feeling, and it's interesting to change it uh, because I like something more. And it's like you know, if you put the uh, the photo in the Photoshop, uh, sometimes it's interesting to play with that. Just change the pigments a little bit and make it look different. So I'm doing the same than I'm painting. It's just a reference, a point to start. This time, by the way, I'm following the, the photo almost precise. I change it just a little bit. Um, normally I make the much more uh, changes. Okay, about the uh, the mixing colors to keep it look uh, fresh and nice. Uh, the the secret I couldn't say what that's the secret solution. Uh, the solution is all my colors transparent, hundred percent. 
including the cobalt you know the cobalt from the daniel smith is the most transparent cobalt what i saw on the market uh, because itself the cobalt couldn't be the transparent 100 percent so if you uh, mix all the pigments transparent all of them in the end even if you mix like a 5 10 20 pigments in the end you will have a nice mix transparent colorful and looks good if you add just one opaque color finally you can have a dirt so the solution is using just a transparent pigments only Mm, okay, uh, about the lights and sh subjects and the background. For sure, uh, it depends on the light. This this time the light's coming from the window here, but if it will be from the side, from the front, I like any kind of lights coming. Just it should be light. I like the strong light. I'm using this, but the direction is not exactly important. okay yes about the transparency uh, on the pigments yeah you can go to the website daniel smith and on the website you will find all the information about the transparent or not the colors so that it, it marks always and that's important information And now I'm start to use the Phthalo blue color, Phthalo blue turquoise. So that, as I say, that's really, really amazing pigment. Okay, we have a uh, 200 people online. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. I know for the some countries it's too early, and that that's why I can say double thank you for that.
Hello, Singapore. Thank you, Aaron, very much. I appreciated your words. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm agree. And you know, I can tell you the huge secret about the phthalo blue turquoise. The normally, normally phthalo pigments are very stunning. It's almost impossible to wash out. But the Daniel Smith make the miracle. The phthalo blue turquoise possible to wash out. You see, I can make the lights just wash out the pigments back like that. So that's something incredible. Normally, it's almost impossible to do with the phthalo pigments. So, you see, this one, very easy to wash out. So, it's colorful, stunning, but at the same moment, possible to control. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you for question. Yeah, for sure, I'm making a mistake uh, a lot. You have no idea how many papers go into the garbage. Uh, you know, if you want to uh, always try to something new to make the challenge and make an experience, uh, always a lot of papers go into the garbage. So it's look like you. Uh, you exchange your time and paper for experience. If you not put yourself in the risk, uh, finally, maybe you're starting to produce the same subjects many times, make it perfectly, but it's not the artist way, right? So the experience, then we're trying to do something new always. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Hello, Ernesto. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Uh, about the, do you have to make your paper wet? Um, you know, there is no one answer. It depends on the style and techniques what you're going to use. Me, personally, I prefer to see the water on the back of my paper, always. I make it wet, because that gives me more time. You see all the connection, what I'm doing. Uh, the pigments drying slowly, so that's easy to control. But do you have to do the same? Depends of your style. And do you have to put the water on the front? Again, depends of what you do. If you painting wet on wet a lot, it makes sense. If not, if you want to keep the dry shape like I'm doing there, it's not necessary. That's why I don't put the water on front this time.
Yeah, for sure. Uh, that video will be available after the demo. Uh, I believe the YouTube need a few hours uh, um, to work with a uh, video file. And after that, that will be available, I hope. So it wasn't planned. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So we're going to finish it uh, our body. Yeah, I understand the point with the price of paper. So what we can do, um, you know, that's the decision what we have to make before we start to paint with the watercolor. For my opinion, for my feeling, we can save money if we paint and buy oil because the honestly, except the very specific techniques. Uh, the quality of the oil pants is not important. Again, except a very specific style or something. Um, the quality of the canvas uh, not important as well. So you can paint almost like by finger on the on the plywood if it's primed. But for uh, watercolor, the materials is extremely important. It's number one. Uh, the reason is simple because uh, just in watercolor all the materials all the parts going inside each other you know like a deep connection the pigments water going inside the paper that's why the quality of the pigments and quality of the paper change everything so you couldn't save money on that no way unfortunately if you want to have a great result you have to use the great material Yes, Kim, good question. You see, in my left hand, I am always have a paper tower. And uh, you don't see that because I couldn't make it on front of the paper because sometimes I can drop the pigments on my paper. But before I'm touching, I always remove the extra pigments here. I have to use a lot of uh, water to mix uh, my pigments. But after that, that's what I'm doing before I touch my paper. That helped me to control that. This is the half of the imperial size. Uh, that means 22 by 15 inches. That's my favorite size and uh, by the way, it's uh, very good for camera because the full size paper, which I like as well, very hard to use for the for the demo like that, just because of the technical problem. But the half of the imperial size is good enough to 
control the, the details and the same moment um, good for camera Okay, yes, about the brushes, uh, absolutely. Uh, I like the Escoda brushes. That's a brilliant quality and I like them, all the brushes very much. It's just uh, not exactly fits for my style, uh, what I prefer to use, but the brushes is just perfect. So if you find something like Escoda Perla or uh, uh, the Skoda produce uh, many series with a uh, really, really high quality uh, brushes, including the Ultimo. That's the uh, good price synthetic brushes. So you can, in the Skoda, you can find everything you want. Da Vinci, brilliant brand, very nice quality. So all that brushes is really, really good. Ah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, we planning to repeat that uh, for sure. Uh, that was our first time. And in the future, we will try to repeat it. I believe the next time I will try to, uh, to do the same on the Instagram. Um, uh, we make the, uh, some information before. And by the way, uh, you can subscribe on my website watercolorline.com in that case you never miss my demo because we always make the information about that on the website but yeah we're planning to back to the youtube uh, maybe in one month for the demo again Thank you very much for uh, what you like my video. We have a, a lot of likes. Thank you. I appreciate it. And as I say, I appreciate your time today. And the Monday, it's not easy, it's special because in the some countries, as I say, it's too early and you're here. I appreciate it.
Yeah, thank you for com comments about the, the time in Germany. You know, honestly, it's pretty hard to choose the right time for the demo because uh, our planet is it's like a like a sphere, and uh, in each country we have a different timing zone and choose the right one. It's really really hard. So I believe we will try to make it in a different time to find the best way. So it's almost done. I just make the few small correction. After that, I have to care about the face just a little bit, maybe some details and that's it. Uh, I will do that. Y yes, yes. Uh, no worries. I will care about the face right now. I back to that. For sure. But, you know, even if I make it slowly, because I I'm trying to read what you're writing to me and the painting in the same moment, that's why it's like a kind of slowly process. Uh, but anyway, that's just a sketch. So it's not like a long time project or something like this. And just to make a few dynamic strikes, I'm using my big brush again. And again, you see, to, to use the uh, dry brush after I mix my colors, I have to remove the extra paint like that. So I can say we are done with a lady. Um, I have to make the last touch to my sketch. So, 
that's done and uh, you see that's taped uh, after one hour I can maybe two hours I can remove the tape and that helped me to keep my paper flat so thank you very much for your time what you was today with me uh, thank you for your questions uh, seriously it was a pleasure to make that conversation like that so for me it was a great experience and really thank you thank you so much and uh, i hope to see you next time uh, as i say the next demo we will try to create uh, on the instagram just uh, following my website or my facebook instagram account you'll find all the information about the demo in advance and i hope to see you on the youtube again in one month thank you thank you friends thank you very much see you Bye-bye.